Welcome to the Daily DLP. I'm your host, Ash Thompson, and today I'm going to go through the combine drills that actually matter for the players in the quarterback, wide receiver, and running back positions. Let's get it on! Today's going to be quick. Um, don't have a lot of time, sadly. We'll start with the quarterbacks. Ignore 40 times. Mahomes ran a 480. He's more than fast enough for the position, even running the ball. More about the suddenness and ability to navigate the pocket. Like quarterback position getting rushing yards. Popular at the moment, but so is ending the season on IR. Rico tells you about the pocket mobility and suddenness. That matters a lot more. Can the guy get out of the pocket when it's collapsing? That's the thing that actually matters. Uh, other than that, it's the drills throwing the ball, and it's more about whether or not they can follow the coaching points than anything else. Like, if the guys refuse to do what the coaches say, which is, like, throwing with anticipation rather than holding off until a guy makes his cut, seeing what he's doing, and trying to be accurate based off that, um, you guys are probably not super long for the league. And that's all I'm going to say about quarterbacks, because, like I said, uh, time's a little tight today. Running backs, broad jumps, 10-yard split from the 40. Like that, that's, your, that's your indicators for this position. The three cones good too in terms of watching how the player cuts. Like guys who kill it on those three things have the athletic potential to make bigger plays than the blocking gets for them. But the position primarily comes down to field vision and standing up on a set of blocks as opposed to extreme athletic capability. That's why there are so many like relatively productive players from the running back position in day three is because elite athletic traits are what gets drafted high. That is not what you need to be good at running back. And now let's just get on to the receivers. Because <laughs> I frankly don't really expect the Lions to be focusing too much on either of those two positions. And thus my, you know, coverage so far has also not focused that much on them, so I'm not going to talk about something I haven't watched much of. Like, the, the receivers are what we're all here to look at today. That's that's what we all want to see. It's it's the thing we as fans think is a huge priority. I'm not sure the Lions agree with that, uh, but yeah, and like, like it'd be great if Seamus Williams did develop into being what we all hope he's going to be, but if he doesn't, well, they need to have a backup plan, and they're not likely to find that backup plan super late in the draft. And I know we're all kind of low on Josh Reynolds right now, but he like, he's a starting receiver, quality player in the NFL, but if he got bumped by the end of the year to wide receiver four, none of us would be complaining. Uh, the thing you need to know is that 40 times actually have a negative correlation for receiver quality. It has bared out continuously, forever. A good 40 time, awesome. A great 40 time has no addition to it. So if you guys, you know, 5'11 and 165 pounds, but he runs a 429, don't draft that guy. Uh, <laughs> nothing affects draft stock more relative to the act as all players ability to play in the league uh, three code times also have a negative correlation with NFL success uh, guys with as varied skill sets as Debo Samuel DJ Moore and DK Metcalf have all put up abysmal three-cone tones, and they're doing just fine. Uh, vertical jump is actually the test with the highest level correlation NFL success. Uh, Ten-yard split is also more important than the 40, because receivers also very rarely run 40 yards in a straight line. They run 10 yards, and then they cut. Uh, more or less, the vast majority of the top. And to, like, it doesn't matter if they have massive hands. There's been nothing that shows that that is particularly great. Um, 
but having tiny hands basically qualifies you from the potential to be a successful receiver in the NFL because guys with small hands can't catch hard thrown balls as an almost universal rule. So they end up body catching and body catchers don't last in the league. That's probably what Michael Irvin has to say. Uh, oddly enough, the things that are most likely to result in NFL success have nothing to do with times. Uh, height and weight. Of all the things measured at the combine, height, weight, and run life are the things that are at the core with success in the league. We can point to exceptions. Obviously, beyond a certain point, it is actually a negative to be too big or too tall. But basically, like 6'2 to 6'4 is a very good place to be. Like, and also, like, small guys make it all the time. Uh, Steve Schitt's in the Hall of Fame. Or, really, I don't remember. I vote again. Uh, regardless, I'm going to say Brown, 6 feet tall, 200 pounds, 1,500 yards. It's really how the guy reacts to the ball as it's being aired during the drills that is the thing that actually matters about the combine. Uh, players. I'm not even going to talk about Roman Harrison, Roman Chambers, Roman Dunes, uh, Troy Franklin. These those guys are all going to be gone before the plans are picking. Michigan's uh, Bowman Wilson. Going to have a great day today, but chances are, if you're listening to a podcast with the Lions, you already know who he is and know that he's going to do that. Uh, Ryan, and you probably don't know, is Ryan Flournoy of Southeast Missouri State. A dominant old small school receiver that is going to have casual fans going, who today? Uh, he popped constantly in senior bowl practice footage repeatedly. And his game film was full of great catches like consistency within those great catches. But the reason I want to bring him to the Detroit Lions fans' attention is he blocks like a freight train, like a missile fired at defensive backs. It's, it's beautiful. I, I, like, I love me some Ryan Florida. Uh, he's 6'1 and 200 pounds, and he does better work than most of the guys who are going to go on around the one. As far as like technical skill goes, he just does it at a lower level of competition. But again, at the senior bowl, he was in with the best competition available and he still got constantly. Uh, what else? One of the receivers that got played for Anthony Richardson being terrible in Florida, uh, had a great year. As soon as Anthony Richardson was gone, uh, so good he's the DJ's top 50 prospects after I was told continuously last year that. Uh, to and the NFL website quote from the scout actually throws a lot of shit at it and, and I found it all. basically they say that uh, there's always going to be great when he gets the lead with an accurate quarterback because he gets open uh, I don't know how fast he is uh, all I know is that in the position drills I was talking about he's going to track the ball one pound and basically like a center field it's really nice watching him when a ball is catched. Uh, Keon Coleman, he is going to tell you today where he's going to get drafted. Uh, his numbers just need to be, like, not, not great for him to stay in the first round. And when it's a positional for else, where he's going to be ridiculous. He catches everything and he makes everything work so easy, even when it's virtually impossible. Like, this is the guy who has this year's highlight catch that like rivals the Calvin Johnson catch. If you haven't seen that, do yourself a favor and uh, look up Calvin Johnson college highlights. You are going to know which catch I'm talking about. Uh, in the gauntlet, uh, Coleman's drill is going to be a straight line. Oh, a very, very good Drill for telling you whether or not a guy has the natural ability to catch the ball. Um, who else do I want to talk about? Uh, Jalen Polk he is thick, but not tall. He's probably going to put up some decent numbers too. Uh, anything that pops up as like bad or below average, though, for him is going to cost him money just because he's not tall. Uh, <laughs> Adonai Mitchell is 
probably also going to be going for the Lions pick. He's real flashy. And I'm super curious to see how he tests. Uh, Xavier Leggett is the Lions lion that ever lioned at wide receiver, and we all need to be for a slow floating time. So that he calls a spot for Will, but, uh, and he does. Always interviewed Luke McCaffrey. We were paying attention during the Senior Bowl. You know, he's a uh, seems like a good dude. Uh, <laughs> and he's only got one year at wide receiver, so his testing is more important than it is for most people because he played quarterback for most of his college career. So we're just going to want to see him drop that sneaky athletic moniker in favor of just being called athletic today. And sadly, that is the amount of time I have to do this today. I have to go basically immediately after I finish recording this, tomorrow with the offensive lineman, running a distance they will never have to run again in their professional lives. So then...